Hey, do you know what this animal is? Well, it certainly is not the Lion King. It's the animal that appeared in the 2019 version of Hakuna Matata. When I saw it five years ago, it makes me kinda happy because a lesser known animal is shown. This is an elephant shrew. So, let me broad up the question. What exactly is elephant shrew? Elephant shrew is a placental mammal, just like other shrews and elephants. Formerly, they are classified in the Ordo Insectivora, but now they are their own monophyletic group in the Ordo Macroscalidea. Every extant species is classified in the Familia Macroscalididae. They are also called the Sengis, from the Bantu language of Africa. They can be classified into two groups. One is the giant Sengis, subfamilia Rincocchionine, with a singular genus Rincocchion. This is the one that appears in the 2019 version of the Lion King. Their size can vary between 20 to 50 cm, depending on the species. Not exactly giant, I know. These animals also have a relatively large brain, at least compared to other insectivores. Here is the scan of their brain, the one that is highlighted in white. The other group is the soft fur Sengis, subfamilia macroscalidine. This has the majority of the elephant shrews. They are relatively small, which is why the other one is called the giant Sengis. Elephant shrews can be found in Africa, mostly South Africa. They are small quadrupedal animals with long scaly tail, just like shrew. They are insectivores, just like shrew. They are mostly cursorial, which means they usually run, and they are fast, just like shrew. They could also do saltatorial locomotion though, that means they are a good jumper. One of their most noticeable characteristic is that they have a trunk, just like elephant, not true. That's why they are called the elephant true, if that's not already obvious. All in all, they look like a shrew but with elephant trunk. And so, guess which one of these two is evolutionary closer to them? Yep, the elephant. Did you expect that? Elephant shrews are grouped inside the Afrotheria clade, with Tenrex, Golden Moles, Artvark, Hyrax, Dugong and Menadi, and also elephant. Their small bodies enabled them to fill various habitats. Some live among the boulders, some in gravel plains, desert, savanna, woodlands, you name it. They are mostly crepuscular, which means they are mostly active during dawn and dusk, also known as the twilight. They could also be found basking during the day. They have good sense of sight, smell, and sound. And as I said, they run fast, so it's difficult to capture them. They are known as socially monogamous, which means they usually stick together as a pair. In their case, this bond is relatively weak, compared to many other monogamous animals. They don't really do stuff together not working together or anything. Their monogamous relation is mostly just for reproduction. They do share territory, though. Usually, there is only a pair of elephant shrew in a territory. They don't really build a nest. They usually shelter in rock crevices or bushes. The giant sengis do build a nest out of leaves, though. They are insectivorous, mostly feeding on ants and termites but also other small creatures like worms, millipedes, spiders, and stuffs. They use their long tongue as a probe to search for prey. To eat the prey, they flick their tongue, just like anteaters. But the thing is, there is something peculiar about this. Normally, animals' diet correlate with their teeth. But when you look at their teeth, it's not like other insectivores' teeth. Most insectivores have a tribosphenic molar like this image of a shrew teeth. Meanwhile, elephant shrew has a typical hypsodon teeth, which is typically found in herbivores, such as deer teeth. They also have an enlarged cecum, also evidence of being herbivore, at least anatomically. When we consider the fossil records of them, most also shown the same thing. By that I mean, it shows evidence of herbivory. The teeth of the extinct genus, Myohyrax, is also hypsodon, which is very similar to Hyrax teeth, very much so that 
It was misidentified as Hyrax, hence the name. These evidence point to them having an herbivore ancestry. Nowadays, they could also be observed eating small fruits, at least the soft fruit one, not the giant one. Recently, the Somali elephant true, Elephantolus revoili, was rediscovered after being considered a lost species for 50 years. It was thought to be endemic to Somalia, but it's now discovered in Djibouti, showing a broader range of distribution from what is known previously. It has also been moved to a new genus, Galegeiska, which means the inhabitant of the horn. The horn in this context refers to Geiska Africa, or the Horn of Africa, indicating its broader distribution. This animal is the northeasternmost occurrence of sub-Saharan elephant true. So yeah, it's good to see when a lost species is rediscovered, even more so when it provides a new insight. This group of animals is one of the lesser known and lesser studied among the mammals, because they are quite elusive. Who knows what more can we discover from them in the future? For now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now. <laughs>